Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Huge well welcome back everyone to the special weekend edition of the Markets Around the World. My name is K2, and as per usual, we'll be covering everything from the latest data macro news stories, and of course, key levels that you need to be watching. If you love markets like we do, remember to subscribe and help better educate yourself about how these markets actually work together. So let's talk about what happened on the market and outlook too. come. The U.S. stock market's bull run has hit a rough patch, as bond yields spiked this month on fears that a robust economy is fueling inflationary pressures. The S&P 500, SPX, is on pace for its biggest monthly drop since December 2022, with April's pullback erasing about half of the gains the U.S. stock market had accumulated by the end of March. The index has slumped 5.5% this month through Friday, reducing its climb in 2024 to 4.1%. Nevertheless, the S&P 500 is just 5.5% away from its record closing peak on March 28th. Equity investors correctly anticipated strong economic growth in the U.S. this year. However, the current issue is that this perspective is already reflected in stock prices, while bond yields are playing catch-up, according to Bob Elliott, Chief Executive Officer and Chief Investment Officer of Unlimited Funds. The increase in Treasury bond yields this year accelerated in April, unsettling U.S. stocks. Yet, Elliott believes that long-term Treasury rates may need to rise even further to temper demand in the economy before the Federal Reserve can gain enough confidence that inflation is sustainably declining towards its 2% target. Financial conditions, pretty much any way you slice it, are easy today. Elliott said in a phone interview. All indications suggest that this first quarter GDP number is going to be pretty strong. This week, on April 25, investors will receive an estimate from the Bureau of Economic Analysis on U.S. gross domestic product growth in the first three months of 2024. So far, the economy has proven resilient despite the Fed's tightening monetary policy aimed at curbing inflation. Bank of Japan Governor Kazuo Ueda stated on Friday that the central bank is very likely to raise interest rates if underlying inflation continues to rise and may begin reducing its significant bond purchases at some point in the future. Weda emphasized that the central bank must maintain loose monetary policy for the time being, as underlying inflation remains somewhat below its 2% target and long-term inflation expectations are still around 1.5%. Despite ending various unconventional monetary easing measures in March, the BOJ has introduced more flexibility to its policy and may adjust its short-term interest rate target based on forthcoming data developments, he added. We will proceed cautiously, initially evaluating the impact of our recent policy changes on the economy and inflation, and then considering further adjustments as deemed appropriate, potentially gaining insights on the neutral rate along the way. Ueda told a seminar hosted by the Peterson Institute for International Economics. After emerging from the ordeal of 8% mortgage rates, it seemed that the worst was over for the U.S. housing market. However, that wasn't the case. The housing market now appears to be back at square one, with mortgage rates once again crossing above 7%, and the lock-in effect still deterring people from selling their homes because they are unwilling to relinquish their relatively lower and highly valued mortgage rates. Given this situation, and with no indication that market conditions will significantly change this year, sales of existing homes are expected to remain depressed, stated Ben Ayers, senior economist at Nationwide Economics. The fact that higher mortgage rates haven't led to a decrease in home prices is negatively impacting many potential home buyers, especially those who currently do not own a home and thus cannot leverage that equity. Nearly 30% of homes sold in March were purchased by all cash buyers. The U.S. housing market is in a different realm compared to the rest of the world, remarked Tobias Adrian, director of the International Monetary Fund's Monetary and Capital Markets Division. Between March 2019 and 2024, the median price of a resale home in the U.S. surged to $393,500 from $259,400 a nearly 52% increase according to NAR data. Even when adjusted for inflation, that increase remains significant, noted Adrian, as housing costs have risen by 20% since 2019. Real estate agents are endeavoring to persuade home buyers that higher mortgage rates and home prices are the new norm, 
urging them to abandon hopes of a return to pre-pandemic levels of 4% mortgage rates. Home sales are slower than usual, but there are still people buying and selling because if not now, when? Commented Connie Dernal, a Redfin Premier agent in Dallas, in Redfin's latest housing market update. I've had a few prospective buyers touring homes for the last several years, since mortgage rates started going up, and they wish they would have bought last year because prices and rates are even higher now. Dernal added, My advice to them, if you can afford to and you find a house you love, buy now. There's no guarantee that rates will come down soon. She further advised, Here are the five significant challenges the housing market is confronting, illustrated in charts. Mortgage rates surpassed 7% in mid-April. The 30-year mortgage rate increased for the third consecutive week, reaching its highest level since November 2023. This surge was fueled by expectations that the Federal Reserve would hold off on cutting interest rates in the near term. Mortgage rates surged this week on the back of expectations that the Federal Reserve will hold off on cutting interest rates in the near term. Mortgage rates are at the highest level since November 2023. For many home buyers, higher monthly mortgage payments consume too much of their household income, as depicted in the chart above. For a typical listed home, with a median price of $424,900 in March, according to Realtor.com, a 30-year mortgage rate of 7.1% would result in a monthly mortgage payment of principal and interest amounting to $2,158. This calculation assumes a 20% down payment and includes property taxes and home insurance. A rate of 7.1% would require a buyer to earn a gross income of $114-319, assuming they spend 30% of their income on housing. To be clear, homeowners selling in certain markets are feeling the impact of diminishing buyer demand and are therefore reducing prices to align with the new market conditions. Approximately 6% of listed homes had reduced their prices in the four weeks leading up to April 14th, according to Redfin data a significantly higher figure than in 2023. Additionally, renting has become more affordable than buying for many aspiring homeowners, as depicted in the gap above. Renting is indeed more affordable than buying a home in all of the top 50 metro areas in the U.S., thanks to high rates and prices. The decline in the magnificent seven stocks wiped out a collective $950 billion from their market capitalizations this week marking the group's worst-ever weekly loss of market value. While Tesla stock experienced the largest weekly percentage decline among the group, Apple Inc. Rao, Microsoftus, and NVIDIA were the main contributors to the market cap losses, given their substantially higher valuations compared to the electric car maker. NVIDIA suffered the biggest loss in market capitalization for the week, shedding almost $300 billion, this amount exceeds the total market capitalization of its rival, Advanced Micro Devices Inc., AMD, which currently stands at $237 billion. Shares of NVIDIA dropped 13.6% this week as the semiconductor sector faced pressure. This decline also marked NVIDIA's worst weekly performance in terms of percentage since it fell 16.1% on September 2, 2022. On Friday, NVIDIA's stock plummeted 10%, recording its most significant single-day percentage drop since it fell 18.5% on March 16, 2020, according to Dow Jones market data. With the stock declining nearly $85, it registered its largest one-day price decline on record. Let's review some data that I want to show you guys. We begin with this. The Treasury's cash pile surged by $172 billion to $897 billion on Monday as the income tax deadline came due. This is the highest increase since the April 2022 tax collection. In April 2024 so far, the Treasury has collected nearly $290 billion in taxes. By comparison, in the entire 2022, tax revenues amounted to $600 billion. Tax revenue is skyrocketing with recent capital gains. Next data is, the NASDAQ Composite just posted its biggest daily loss in 17 months. Today, the magnificent seven stocks erased a whopping $400 billion in market cap. We now have inflation back on the rise, higher for longer returning, and geopolitical tensions. Another data I want to show you guys is, 
U.S. Treasury bills now yield four times more than the S&P 500's dividend, marking the highest ratio since the dot-com bubble. Over the last 100 years, a multiple this high has been observed only once. By comparison, even during the 2008 financial crisis, this metric peaked at approximately three times, with interest rate cuts being priced out. It is likely that we will see interest rates on bonds continue to rise. This will keep U.S. T-bill rates elevated and may even push this ratio to its highs of 2,000. It's yet another similarity to the dot-com bubble. The next interesting data is, copper prices are currently at their highest level since June 2022. The last time copper prices were this high, U.S. CPI inflation was at a 41-year high of 9.1%. Over the last two months alone, copper prices have risen by approximately 22%, adding to inflationary pressures. Meanwhile, oil prices are approaching $90, and cocoa prices are at all-time highs. Additionally, U.S. gasoline prices have reached a fresh six-month high. It seems that inflation is back for more. Close pay attention on this data. The Magnificent Seven companies now hold a record $300 billion in cash. Since 2022, their free cash flow has surged by a remarkable 45%. Moreover, since 2019, these tech giants have more than doubled their cash balances. To contextualize this, the cash balance of the Magnificent Seven companies is larger than that of all but 22 U.S. stocks. In fact, their cash balance is equivalent to the market capitalization of Costco. U.S. tech companies truly represent a massive presence in the market. The last data I want to show you guys is, are the gold markets concerned about the U.S. budget deficit? Over the last two decades, there has been a direct correlation between the U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio and gold prices. As the U.S. debt-to-GDP levels increased, so did gold prices. Since late 2023, U.S. debt has been increasing at a historic pace, reaching $1 trillion every 100 days. During this time, gold has returned approximately 20%, making it one of the best-performing assets of the year. The Congressional Budget Office, CBO, estimates that the U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio will reach a new record within three years. These trends suggest that the U.S. is on an unsustainable fiscal path, prompting concerns in the gold markets about the U.S. budget deficit. Let's see a heat map and check what earnings we do have for this week. It was indeed a tumultuous week in the market last week. Microsoft experienced a decline of 5.4% while Apple saw a significant drop of 6.54%. It's surprising to see such established trillion-dollar companies facing such downturns. NVIDIA also took a hit, dropping by 13.59%. Additionally, Amazon and Meta both experienced declines of 6%. These fluctuations highlight the volatility and uncertainty present in the market, affecting even the largest and most influential companies. These are the most important earnings I will watch closely, or I might play. I believe that no matter what Tesla reports, it's due for a bounce, and only a bounce. So personally, I would buy it here around $144 if it gets there for a trade. If you need to save this, pause the video and take a screenshot so you can play later. On the Fear and Greed Index, we are currently at Fear Level 31. If we reach extreme fear, it could signify a key bottom for the market. Do you think we can reach extreme fear this week? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's look at the SPY 4-hour chart. I believe we might see more selling until some good news emerges, which could be anything. However, if we gap up tomorrow and buyers step in on Tuesday, it indicates that ABC will play out. If not, my main buying watch is at 477. Next, let's examine the QQQ 4-hour chart. It appears to be in a similar scenario as SPY. Currently, the price is oversold. If we get a bounce, it could indicate that the ABC pattern will play out. However, if not, we may experience further downside. I'll be closely monitoring the 400 level, which is crucial. If we hit 400, I believe the bulls will step back in. Hey, the last chart I'll examine is Tesla. It's currently oversold, and the ABC pattern seems to be playing out. Additionally, the 147 gap has already been filled. If the price continues to decline, the next levels to watch are 125 and 103. This week's U.S. economic data. On Tuesday, services PMI manufacturing, PMI new home sales, and on Wednesday, 
Durable goods orders on Thursday. Q1 GDP, jobless claims pending home sales. And on Friday, core PCE inflation, consumer sentiment. Thank you for watching. If you found value in this video, please share and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye for now.